Hey everybody! This week we are not going to talk about any of the weird parts of G.I. Joe. We're not going to talk about spaceships or villains with gold helmets. This week we are going in the opposite direction. We're going to look at a part of G.I. Joe that you might consider mundane. We're going to look at a guy who didn't come with any guns, he didn't drive a vehicle, he was in charge of something far more important. Computers! That's right, G.I. Joe had a computer tech in 1986. Yeah, that's really all he did. Despite the lack of action in this action figure, he's still one of my favorite characters. This week we're going to look at Mainframe. Everybody, Hood of Cobra Commander 788 here. It's time for another vintage G.I. Joe toy review. And before we get started, I want to thank Chris Piers for drawing the title card for this episode. Chris has been a friend of the show for some time now, and he has his own show, Comic Tropes, right here on YouTube. So be sure to check him out. The last few weeks on this show have been downright funkadelic. We've looked at a guy with a fuchsia uniform, we've looked at a spaceship. It's about time we get back to the earlier years of G.I. Joe, the more grounded years. 80s G.I. Joe fans often consider 1982 through about 1985 to be the best years, but there were some good toys released in 1986 too. We had a Marine, we had a Navy SEAL, we had an Army Ranger, but there were also a lot of weird elements that year too. But there was one guy who flew under the radar in 1986. Did he come with a camouflage uniform and a realistic weapon? No, he did not. But he was one of the most down-to-earth characters that year. By 1986, we were several years into the microcomputer revolution. In the 1984 Super Bowl, Apple ran its famous commercial for the Macintosh computer. The foundations of the Internet were laid when ARPANET adopted Transfer Control Protocol and Internet Protocol in 1983. We were still a few years away from computers being ubiquitous in middle-class homes, but we were starting to to realize the possibilities of what computers could bring to our lives. Computers represented the power of free and easy transfer of information. Computers were the future. G.I. Joe needed a computer expert. They got more than that. They got a veteran of two branches of service. HCC 788 presents Mainframe. This is Mainframe, G.I. Joe's computer specialist from 1986. This figure was first available in 1986 and was also available in 1987. It was discontinued for the year 1988. There was a second version of Mainframe also released in 1986 as part of the Special Mission Brazil set. That Special Mission Brazil set included recolored versions of five 1986 figures plus one new figure that was made of reused parts. It also included an audio tape. Other than that, there were no other versions of Mainframe in the vintage line. That's surprising because G.I. Joe went into more of a science fiction direction in the later years. Mainframe would have fit pretty well in that era. Did Mainframe have a replacement after the figure was discontinued? That's difficult to say. G.I. Joe had a ton of characters that were experts in technology, but I can't find a computer specialist later in the line. There were later versions of sci-fi and dial tone, but I can't really call them replacements for Mainframe since the characters were introduced the same year as Mainframe. They were also not specifically computer experts. The closest I can get is Gears from 1994. He was an invention technician in the Star Brigade subset, and he was the driver of the Power Fighter, but he still wasn't exactly a computer specialist. I find this surprising, as computers became more common in 
American homes, G.I. Joe de-emphasized their computer specialist. I would have thought having a computer specialist on the team would have been a good way to keep up with the times. As much as I dislike Star Brigade, Mainframe could have been easily adapted for it. Before Mainframe, Breaker was depicted as G.I. Joe's resident computer expert. Breaker was a communications specialist, but the comic book made a point of showing him working on computers. The Cobra counterpart for Mainframe at the time he was first released would be the Televiper. The Televiper was a 1985 figure, but it still was on the pegs in 1986. The Televipers weren't exactly computer experts, they were communications specialists like Breaker, but they worked on computers too. In 1987, Cobra got the Techno Viper. The Techno Viper was more of a direct counterpart to Mainframe. Mainframe represents one of my favorite character archetypes, the Old Soldier. We'll get into his character later in this video. Let's take a look at Mainframe's accessories, starting with what the card contents call a portable, combat-ready computer system. This is a big, clunky 80s computer with a carrying handle in gray plastic. It has small feet on the bottom, so it can sit flat on the ground. The artwork on Mainframe's card shows the computer sitting on extended legs, but the toy does not have that. Maybe it was intended to. There are little holes on those feet, so maybe there was an accessory that they cut for cost. It is hollow underneath. On the computer we have a small monitor screen, lots of tiny keys on the keyboard, we have two slots for five and a quarter inch floppy disks. It looks like there is a disk in one of those slots. This is similar to real portable computers from that era. Check out this IBM Portable PC 5155 from 1984. It doesn't seem very portable since the thing weighed 30 pounds, but this is the technology Mainframe would have been working with. The next accessory is Mainframe's backpack, which the card contents call a BP-75E field transmitter slash receiver unit with walkie-talkie. It is in that same gray plastic as the computer. This backpack has an antenna that is often broken off. It also has a peg for the connector to the walkie-talkie. We'll look at that in a moment. Uh, this backpack pegs mainframe as a computer specialist too, though his file card doesn't mention it. I would say the transmitter backpack was used in conjunction with the computer to transmit data, but the backpack doesn't connect to the computer, and wireless technology was pretty primitive at the time. The backpack also includes a walkie-talkie with a black hose connector, so it seems like it really is intended as a traditional communications backpack. This is a little redundant, since Dial Tone had his own much more robust communications backpack in 1986. I'll just pretend this is a transmitter for the computer. Finally, we have the walkie-talkie. Uh, it's very small, and it has a black rubbery hose connector that connects to the backpack. There's a peg on the walkie-talkie, and there is a peg on the backpack itself. So that's how it connects one end to the other. That walkie-talkie is very tiny. It's made of black plastic. It's a frequently missing accessory, as you can imagine. It has an antenna and a peg. It has a little speaker on it and a couple buttons. It's easier to fit the black connector hose in Mainframe's hand than the walkie-talkie itself. The accessory is a little too thick to fit in a figure's hand without stressing the thumb. The accessories fit well with Mainframe. Even the transmitter pack evokes a high-tech feel. The dark gray color provides a subtle contrast with the light gray of Mainframe's uniform. He comes with no weapons, but that's fine. He isn't a frontline combat troop, he's a technician that operates in a supporting role. Let's take a look at the articulation on Mainframe. He had the articulation that was standard for G.I. Joe figures from 1986, so he could turn his head from left to right and look up and down. He could swing his arm up at the shoulder and swivel at the shoulder all the way around. He had a hinge at the elbow so he could bend at the elbow about 90 degrees. He had a swivel at the bicep so he could swivel his arm all the way around. The figure was held together with a rubber O-ring that looped around the inside, so he he could move at the torso a bit. He could move his legs apart about so far. He could bend his leg at the hip about 90 degrees and bend at the knee about 90 degrees. Let's take a look at the sculpt design and color of Mainframe starting with his head. And on his head he has a non-removable helmet. It is black. It has a silver Marine Corps emblem on it. Mainframe has some deeper lines sculpted on his face around his mouth. That's because Mainframe is older than most of his G.I. Joe teammates. That's one of the things I like about 
about this character. As usual, I would prefer this helmet to be removable. It would have been really nice as a separate accessory. If we could remove the helmet, we could see Mainframe's hair, which I imagine as mostly black with a little gray. It's a catch-22, though. If the helmet had been removable, we probably wouldn't have had a painted detail on it. Being non-removable, they were able to give us a nice silver Marine Corps emblem. The helmet designates Mainframe as a Marine, but he didn't start his military career as a Marine. His file card tells that story. On his chest, he has a light gray shirt, possibly a jumpsuit, but maybe not. His collar has two silver square tabs, and he has a sculpted zipper right down the center. I'm zoomed in so I can try to point out all the details on this chest. There's a lot going on here. There are silver epaulets on the shoulders. On the right side of his chest, he has a couple black patches. There's not a lot of detail on them, but the upper patch looks like it might be jump wings. This would be from the early part of his military career as U.S. Army Airborne. The lower patch may be a combat infantryman badge, since it's mentioned on the file card. He has an unpainted pocket on his right side. He has a black strap that runs from his left shoulder down under his right arm, and that black strap does continue around the back. On that black strap, he has numerous silver details. He has a pistol on his left side, a black pistol holster with black straps, and very tiny silver clasps. In that holster, he has a silver-handled pistol that is positioned to be drawn with his right hand. This pistol is one of only two weapons Mainframe has, and both of them are sculpted on the figure so he can't use them. On his lower back, he has a couple black bands that connect to that pistol holster. On his arms, he has gray rolled-up sleeves. He has black gloves, and on those gloves, he has small circle details on his wrists. Those don't look like watches. He also has three sculpted lines on the back of his hands. His left glove looks like it's longer and pushed down. Take a look at the skin on his arms. They sculpted extra lines on his skin, and I think this is another way they tried to make him look older, but he should be maybe just a little older, not 80. On his left shoulder, he has a sculpted on patch that's sculpted on, not just painted on. It's a down-pointed triangle that's cut off partially by the rolled-up sleeves. Uh, that's surrounded by silver, and in the center, there's a silver three-pointed star. It looks like a Mercedes-Benz, but it's actually modified from the sleeve insignia of the U.S. Army Three Corps, also known as the Phantom Corps. During the Cold War, the Three Corps had a training and testing role. This is another holdover from Mainframe's experience in the Army. On his waist piece, he has a silver belt buckle with another Marine Corps emblem on it. Seems like he's very proud to be a Marine. Uh, looks like he has a couple belt loops in the front here with some buttons on them. A couple belt loops in the back. Uh, he has pouches on the belt. On the right side, he has a small silver pouch. And on the left side, he has a large silver pouch. Then on the right side, he has a couple straps that connect to the knife on his right leg. On his legs, he has that same light gray uniform color. On his right leg, he has a black strap and a black sheath for a silver-handled knife. On his right leg, he has a couple straps that go around his thigh, black straps. He has a couple silver buckles on those straps on the inside of his thigh. On the outside of his left leg, he has uh, some technological device here. There's a black base or holster with some silver technical detail. He has a couple black boots that look like standard combat boots at first, but if you look closely, instead of regular laces. He has a couple bands that go around the top, and he has ridges on the top of his feet. As a Marine, Mainframe joins a distinguished lineup of Marines in G.I. Joe, including Gung Ho, Leatherneck, and Sergeant Slaughter. The light gray coloring may seem kind of dull, and it is. There isn't much color to liven it up, but I think it is appropriate for Mainframe. He is a technician. He'll spend most of his time at the base. He has a uniform that is made for crawling into narrow spaces to access cables and computer panels. IBM Theater presents The Mainframe Adventures. You'll be on the edge of your seat as he repairs network outages. Thrill as Mainframe resets passwords. For the third time this month, really, Bazooka, Mainframe Adventures.
Another interesting thing about Mainframe's color scheme is the similarity to one of his 1986 classmates, Low Light. Low Light's uniform is gray with a black cap and black and silver details. Low Light's gray is darker though. That fits his specialty as a night spotter and sniper. It's a good thing other 1986 figures had different colors. If you just looked at these guys, you would think 1986 was a very gray year. I did use Mainframe in my playtime. Often I didn't have much use for these support troops. As I've stated before, I didn't use my medics very much. I also didn't use Chuckles the spy very much. As an adult, I can think of a lot of fun play scenarios for those guys, but as a kid, I didn't focus on them. Mainframe, though, did get some attention. I had the 1983 Headquarters Command Center. It was still mostly intact by 1986. Mainframe was perfect for it. It had a big computer terminal with two seats. I like to have Breaker at the computer when he wasn't riding the Ram motorcycle. The introduction of Mainframe gave me a guy for that second chair. And of course back then computers were basically magic boxes. We had no idea how computers worked, so we imagined they could do about anything. Unfortunately, Mainframe didn't get a lot of adventures outside the base. Let's take a look at Mainframe's file card. His file card had his faction as G.I. Joe and a portrait of Mainframe here. His code name was Mainframe and he was the computer computer specialist. His file name was Blaine L. Parker. His primary military specialty was computer technology. Secondary military specialty is infantry. His birthplace is Phoenix, Arizona, and his grade is E5. This top paragraph says, Mainframe enlisted in the Army Airborne at the age of 17 and made it over to Southeast Asia for the last year of hostilities, just in time to get his combat infantryman's badge. Mainframe was in the Army before he was a Marine. Although the file card does doesn't mention Vietnam, that's what they mean by Southeast Asia. He had a little combat experience, but not very much. He left the army to get his degree from MIT on the GI Bill and did a stent toiling in the antiseptic corridors of Silicon Valley, making big bucks and fighting off boredom with a stick. Luckily, the Marines were looking for a few good men with just his qualifications. The proper papers were signed and Mainframe was back in uniform. The GI Bill was signed into law by FDR in 1944. The official name of the law was the Servicemen's Readjustment Act of 1944. The law allowed U.S. service veterans to collect immediate benefits after their service. Among other things, the GI Bill provided tuition for college and vocational school. MIT is the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, a prestigious research university in Cambridge, Mass. Also, this line where it says the Marines were looking for a few good men, that's an allusion to the slogan on a U.S. Marine Corps recruitment advertisement. There was also a movie called A Few Good Men, but that didn't come out till 1992, so that's not a reference to the movie. Unsatisfied with a lucrative but unfair fulfilling computer job, Mainframe returned to military service, but not the Army. He joined the Marines. He's one of the few Joes to serve in more than one branch of service. It doesn't say how long he was in the Marines before he joined G.I. Joe, but I assume it was several years. This bottom paragraph has a quote. It says, too much of the modern battlefield is computer coordinated not to have a computer specialist right out there in the field with you. Problem is, most hackers don't exactly fit the combat profile. Mainframe is the exception. He was 10 years older than the next oldest trainee at Paris Island, and he still finished at the top of his class. He's got brains, but he's hard. I imagine Mainframe being about 10 years older than he really is. I picture him being kind of in his mid to late 40s, but in reality, he would have been in his early 30s by 1986. 1975 was the last year of the Vietnam War, and that's when Mainframe got there. He joined the Army Airborne at 17, but he probably would have arrived in Vietnam maybe in his early 20s. That would put him in his 30s when he joined G.I. Joe in 1986. I just feel like he ought to be older than that. I think his face sculpt makes him look older, and his character, as depicted in the comic book, made him seem older. Mainframe is an old soldier. The old soldier is one of my favorite character archetypes. The old soldier becomes the mentor of the younger generation. Another similar character was Cup in the 1986 Transformers movie. Characters like Cup and Mainframe can come across
across as curmudgeonly at first. But it's only because they care about the younger generation and they want to teach them and they don't want the younger people's recklessness to bring them to harm. Mainframe has been around. He knows the ropes. He understands why things are done a certain way. Mainframe is also well beyond the phase of his life where he seeks accolades. He just does his job. He doesn't need to act like a hero. He doesn't need praise. So long as he accomplishes his mission and survives, he wins. Let's take a look at how Mainframe was used in G.I. Joe Media. This time I'm going to talk about the comic book first, since the comic book characterization is how I think of Mainframe. He first appeared in issue number 57, but only as a background character. He got the spotlight in issue number 58. In that issue, Mainframe and Dusty are in an undisclosed country in the Middle East. They aid a rebel group in setting up an ambush. In return for their aid, the rebels give them a motorcycle and a guide. The guide is a child soldier named Rashid. At first, Rashid admires Dusty's fighting skill and has nothing but disdain for Mainframe. Dusty encourages Rashid to give Mainframe a chance. The technology used in that issue seems ancient now. Mainframe uses a huge, clunky external modem with a telephone handset to send secret data from a Cobra Terror drone to G.I. Joe headquarters. Mainframe's experience and intelligence enable them to complete the mission and escape. There are a lot of hints at Mainframe's age in that issue. Dusty calls him an old vet and an old campaigner. He's an old campaigner and he doesn't need to prove himself to anyone. He just gets the job done and to blazes what anyone else thinks. Because a soldier only wins by surviving. That sums up how I see Mainframe and why I love the character. Mainframe must have left an impression because Rashid reappears in the comic book series in issue number 118. He has left war behind and has become a computer expert. He works with Destro, though, so I don't know if I would quite call that turning over a new leaf. In that issue, Rashid points out the absurdity of G.I. Joe, a supposedly secret military team, putting its name on all their equipment. Someone had to say it. Thank you, Rashid. After that, Mainframe didn't really have very much to do in the comic book. He had several cameos, usually handling technology in some way. Mainframe was introduced in the animated series in Arise Serpentor Arise Part 1. He had the most screen time in the episode Computer Complications. In that episode, Zarana disguises herself as an army computer expert and infiltrates G.I. Joe headquarters. She works with Mainframe, and by the end of the episode, they seem to have developed romantic feelings for each other. Before that, though, Zarana tries to kill Mainframe several times. She tries to pull down giant crates on him, bean him with a wrench, stab him with a screwdriver. At one point, she tases him, and Zartan leaves a bomb on his chest. But hey, what relationship doesn't have a few rough patches, right? In the cartoon, he wasn't so much the old soldier like he was in the comic book, but his romance with an enemy character does make him a little more interesting. Interesting. Looking at Mainframe overall, I admit this figure isn't very exciting. He's the IT guy. The light gray coloring seems intended to be dull and uninspiring. It's a middle tier figure at best. But I love Mainframe. His appearance in issue number 58 left an impression on me. Of course he could fight if he needed to, but he learned to use his brain over his brawn. He found a way to use his skills for something other than killing people and blowing things up. That's important, and I think it's overlooked when people talk about G.I. Joe. We had a lot of fun adventures with our toy soldiers, but G.I. Joe gave us action figures that did something other than fighting. That adds depth to the line that would easily be overlooked by lesser brands. The file card is superb. It's my favorite type of file card. It's filled with references that are not explained. A child reading this was expected to understand them or look them up or ask a parent. They were like little teaching tools. As a kid reading these file cards, I felt grown up. I felt respected. Someone thought I was smart enough to understand these things or at least learn about them. Mainframe is a veteran. He's a mentor to the younger guys. He doesn't strap on a machine gun and dive into the fray, but everyone knows he could. He's been there and he's done that. So maybe he was a little harder to fit into your play battles than a figure like Leatherneck. So maybe he did spend most of his time at the base. 
But that's okay. When the computers needed to work, Mainframe made sure they did. And if someone needed to hack into Cobra's computer systems, Mainframe could do that. And if he didn't win any medals, that wouldn't bother Mainframe. He just gets the job done. And to blaze is what anyone else thinks. Because a soldier only wins by surviving. That was my review of Mainframe. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again to Chris Pierce for the title card image. Next week I have an important duty to perform. As some of you who follow me on social media know, a Slaughter's Marauder's Armadillo was sent to me by a viewer and then it was destroyed by my dog. I feel terrible about that. When people trust me with their toys, I can't let them come to harm. I take responsibility for it, and I think it's about time I start to make amends. In the meantime, you can catch me on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. I have a website, hcc788.com, where all my videos are sorted by year. Thanks for watching. I'll be back next week with a special G.I. Joe toy review, and until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.